Hi y'all, I'm Allison and Valentine's Just Spin It is back because we are going to play a bonus round today for Kimberly K, aka Kimberly from Goodreads. She played with us in December and she managed to read everything except for one book that was on our TBR last time. I'm impressed because I dropped the ball in December. I only read five books and that included our Start and Stop Buddy Read. So, bravo to you, Kimberly. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I'll do better now that the holidays are over and actually get close to hitting my TBR. All right. So, I am going to be playing my game, obviously, for Kimberly, picking books for her to read in February, and some of them might trickle into March. So, she's given me a shelf to look at on Goodreads to choose the books from, so I will be digging through there to match books up with the prompts in it's on her to read them, so I, I, I'm not on the hook for these books. When I left the game, I did not replace my piece of chocolate up top. So let's do that first, and then we'll get to spinning. Okay, let's go with, let's do this little piece. And Okay, we, we do have writing on the back, but I'm not showing you. These are a surprise. Because just like any box of chocolate, those could be good or bad. We will see. Those come into play if we hit the orange or if we get two numbers at the same time all right i'm going to be kimberly said six or eight spins so we will start with six and see how it goes from there all right let's start are you ready are you ready kimberly it, this is so fun <laughs> Number four, you just start up top with Happy Valentine's Girls' Night rom-com. I briefly looked through your list, and I know you have quite a few contemporary romances in there, so I'm sure I can find a rom-com. Yeah, who says you have to go out on a date for Valentine's? You can hang out with your girls and watch a good rom-com movie. I love those movies. I haven't watched them in ages. So this is going to be a little choppy because I did all the spins and I'm coming back and doing the book selection. So you, you might see some funky things going on the board behind me. But after digging, and I did a lot of digging, I, I think I've got it. How about The Bodyguard by Catherine Center for your first book, Kimberly? This looks like a really cute, I I'm assuming it's going to be a rom-com. It is marked as humor and it's contemporary and it's romance. So I, I would say this is probably a good fit, but she's got his back. He's got her heart. They've got a secret. What could possibly go wrong? So Hannah, she looks more like a kindergarten teacher than anything else, but she's in fact an elite bodyguard. And then we have Jack and Jack is a Hollywood heartthrob with a soccer. So he hires her as a bodyguard. They're going to be going back to his hometown. He, of course, doesn't want anybody to know about the stalker or the fact that she's his bodyguard. So they're, they're going to do the, the fake dating thing to explain her presence at his hometown. And this one sounds like a lot of fun. So there you go. Rom-com. Got one. Let's move on. All right. Let's replace that with... You know what? Let's go with this. Hopefully I won't drop everything. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, over here. You know, it can't just fall straight. Okay, so we're going to put up this one. Cinnamon Red Hot. Steamy romance. Ooh. My daughter just went to work and Lily's a little sad now. Okay, let's do uh, the second spin. <laughs> I think I got that when I played my round. So you get this little calendar page. Friend zone. About a friendship, not a romance. Okay, so you got a rom-com and then you got one that's like friendship heavy. Hopefully I'll be able to find one in your list. This one might be a little bit harder to fill. We will see. All right, every time I go to Barnes & Noble, I see this one and I've been I'm intrigued by them, but I haven't picked them up yet. It's the Finley Donovan series. This is part two of Finley Donovan and Knocks Him Dead. Okay, for this one, I, I kind of got to stretch a little bit. 
I don't know that this is necessarily about friendships, but Finley is hired by her friends. She's going to be working with her friends. So it's the closest one that that's not a romance because you did curate your Goodreads down to a much smaller set for me, but they are primarily romances for Valentine's, I would assume. So we've got a mystery on this one. So Finley Donovan is working on her next novel. She's struggling to keep her head above water as a mother of two, single mother of two, I believe. Yes. And on the bright side, she's got her confidant and her live-in nanny to rely on. And there haven't been any new dead bodies other than a pet goldfish, but that's going to change. So on the not so bright side, somebody wants her ex-husband dead. So while their marriage not may not have been the best, he is a good father. So she, she doesn't want to see him taken out. So trying to save him is going to send her down a rabbit hole of hit women disguised as soccer moms and get her involved with the Russian mob. I need to read these. This sounds like something that would definitely be right up my alley. So there we go. That one's more friendship than romance because she doesn't feel romantic with her husband, ex-husband anymore, obviously. But I guess she would still consider him a friend. You know, he is a good dad after all. So there we go. I, I did it. I found one. All right, let's move right along. Okay, let's replace that with, let's go with these flowers on the top. Blind date. Book you know nothing about. Okay. All right, third spin, Kimberly. Ten. I feel like we haven't been in the middle of the board for a while. You got an envelope of hearts. And guest. So a book with a wedding. So this is like the invitation. I'm sure there will be a lot of Valentine's weddings this year. So I wonder if you have one with a wedding on it. I know one of the books, Agnes and the Hitman, from our Start and Stop Buddy Read Suggestions for February. That one is a Hitman and a Wedding Planner. I want to read that book. But I went to actually get it the other day. And it's a print on demand, so I have to look at the digital on that. I digress though. Let me go dig through yours and see what you've got. Okay, I have to admit defeat. I, I'm not having much luck. I'm gonna come back to this one and we will see if I can find one that might have a wedding. It, it's, it's hard to tell with, you know, the short synopsis that are on Goodreads, but maybe if I dig a little deeper, I'll find one. Cross your fingers. All right, let's go with a conversation art. Cutie Pie, Ask the Sars. This is a sci-fi, if you get it. Okay, number four. Seventeen. The Love Gnomes. My Bloody Valentine is the movie. I assume I was talking about the, yeah, it's got to be the movie because I underlined it like it's a title. Anyway, something with a revenge plot. Revenge plots can be fun. You know, you got you to be careful who you cross when it comes to Valentine's. All right, well, let me dig for that and see what we can find. Okay, so revenge plot. I didn't necessarily see one that's like a traditional revenge plot, at least not that jumped out at me. But what if we went with Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer? So karma, that's all about revenge. You know, you, you reap what you sow. So this is a young adult contemporary romance about a girl who all of a sudden has the ability to cast instant karma on those around her, whether it be good or bad. So I think this one is going to have like magical realism type. Then we've got chronic overachiever Prudence Daniels. And, you know, she gets fed up with the people around her, the, the lazy people, the rude people. She just has no patience for them. So one night after she goes out with her friends on her coastal town, I think they're in California, she wakes up with the ability to cast instant karma. And she has some fun with this. 
So she uses her powers to punish everyone from public vandals to mean gossips. But there's her annoyingly cute lab partner that it, it just doesn't seem to go well with, Quint. He works with the local rescue area for its sea animals. So um, otters are brought into this one in the environment, I believe. So I think it's going to have like an environmentalist tone, magical realism. And of course, you're going to have Prudence dishing out instant karma to everybody around her. So I, I don't know if this one will actually end up being a light one. I have a feeling it might start light and then it might get a little bit heavier with the environmental angle on it. But I don't know. I, I could be wrong. You'll have to read it and let us know. The sea otter angle is definitely unique and I haven't seen any. I might be intrigued to read that. All right, let's keep moving. Let's replace that with, oh, actually, let's do a cute little milkshake. So many red flags, horror. We're not getting much love on the board today, are we? At least as far as the replacements go. I wonder. All right. Fifth spin. <laughs> Nine. I thought we were going to get ten again. You got a cute little cactus. Little black book. I remember getting this one last year because I was explaining what a little black book is. You know, guys used to keep fun numbers of the girls that they wanted to take out. The girls would have their version of a little black book too, but you know when you broke up and you didn't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you would flip through your little black book and you know, maybe call an ex or two and Throw out a line, see if anybody was biting. So, second chance is trope. I like that trope. Hopefully, I'll be able to find one in your list, though. We'll see. It's pretty popular. I'm, I'm betting odds are good, right? Are they in my favor? Okay, Wolf Hunt by Paige Tyler. I believe is going to have a second chances romance in it. Because, oh, what was his name? I, I can't remember names. Remy Boudreau goes back home to New Orleans along with three other SWAT officers from Dallas for training with the New Orleans Police Department. So on the eve of a tropical storm, they're out patrolling the streets of the French Quarter and Remy catches a scent in the air. And it's of his old high school crush, Triana. After reconnecting, Remy and Triana and get close, very close, but Remy's struggling because Ever since his first love, his partner, was killed, he's been keeping women at a distance. But when a mysterious wolf pendant rubs them both into danger, Remy's protective instincts kick in. He just may have to reveal his true self and hope that Remy accepts him. I think he's a werewolf. This is part four in SWAT, the Special Wolf Alpha Team series. So uh, there you go. Second chances. High school crush and she's back in his life. I think that qualifies, right? I'm kind of jealous of your list. Yours is fun. Mine, the TBR gods kind of, you know, toyed with me. So, which reminds me, I do have my game on a story graph if anybody's wanting to use my prompts. I'm doing it by quarters. So you would have January, February, and the Marches books. And you got such a variety on yours. Kimberly, if you want, I will create a challenge on story graph. And then if anybody else wants to use your prompts, y'all can track over there if you like. So let me know if I should do that. Okay, let's go. Um, I'm going to pick and choose. I remember what the teddy bear is. So let's go with this love one. I don't remember that one. Love. Oh, is it time to break up? A book you're considering unhauling. I'm assuming, I can't really, you don't have any of those on your list, so I am not going to put this up because I know you kind of curated books you wanted considered. So, I, I'm not putting this. Plus, there's no way I could pick. So, we're going to go with, let's do this other conversation heart. Hug me, and it is Love is Love, an LGBTQ book. Okay, so this will go on the board. Okay, number six. Are you ready, Kimberly? <clears throat> A 
eight. Don't we have her in like all in the same spot? You get key to my heart. Happily single, a standalone. All right, we seem to have a thing going with yours. I, I, I don't know. Okay, so any standalone book, those always come in handy. Okay, standalone, I found one. Misadventures on the Rebound by Lauren Rowe. So we've got Savannah, Savvy. She is on her way back to Las Vegas for her five-year high school reunion. But before heading out on a road trip, she had the worst day. She got canned from her job in the morning and found out, I guess, her boyfriend was playing her in the afternoon. So, most awful day ever. And she's heading to the reunion. You know, where you want to be presenting your, your best life to all those people you went to high school with. Unfortunately, life's not quite playing into the success story that she would like to present. So, apparently, we're going to start out with this savvy. Drowning her sorrows at a little hole-in-the-wall bar on the way to the reunion. Nothing's going her way until a mysterious sexy stranger walks in. A blonde haired leather jacket carrying a motorcycle helmet. He might be just what he what she needs to turn this reunion thing around. I think there'll be fake dating in this one and it's gonna be quite steamy. So there you go. There's that one. Sexy guy with the motorcycle. Always a win. Okay, let's do oh if you were curious that uh, Teddy Bear is one that it's a secret crush has a stalker. I'm not gonna put a stalker up there. You you got enough of that stuff. So let's try the llama. Matchmaker. Family or friend pick. So that could be cute and cute. Okay, I know you said six or eight. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do eight. It's, it's too much fun. So uh, on to spin seven. Are you ready? <laughs> that looks like it's right between 14 and 15. It might be a hair closer to 15, but we're going to go up top anyway, because that's fun. So I'm going to respin and we're going to get you a piece of chocolate. Okay, number 21. So we just circle around, you know, 510. You know how it works. So 21 is number one. I wrote them really small on the theme. I didn't want to figure it out. Okay, are you ready? Did you get a good piece of chocolate? Lost reservation. TBR gods are just toying with us all this month. Okay, so lost reservation. You were gonna go out to eat, but they don't have your name down. So remove last prompt and respin. What, what was your last prompt? Well, that's not fair. You had the sexy guy on the motorcycle and now he has to go away. So uh, we're gonna knock misadventures off of the list and see what goes in its place. That's, that's kind of poor Savannah, poor little savvy. She's just. Her day just keeps getting worse and worse. She's even bumped from the TBR. I'm telling you, these TBR gods are, they've got a sense of humor this month. Okay, so, let me, so forget that book, you, you don't get to read that one. So, I mean, you can if you want to, but it's not officially on your TBR. It took it away. Bad chocolate. Must be dark chocolate. I only like milk chocolate. Okay, so let's re replace our chocolate. Let's go with this. I'm gonna assume oh, it's blank. <laughs> yeah. A lot of blanks in there. We only got three left. Um this looks like a rollo to me. Oh I, I can't you can't see what it is. Okay, so we got a respin for the sixth book. I, I got it. Are you ready, Kimberly? And are, are you just like, oh man, or are you over there kind of giggling or going, Shoo, I didn't want that one after all. Okay. Let's give it a spin. <laughs> Number 22. 
number nine. I just put this up here. Love is love, LGBTQ. All right, so you gotta find that in there somewhere. Okay, this is another one I've been digging and I don't see anything that fits LGBTQ in your um, list, but I will give it one more look before I give up on it. In the meantime, let's keep going. Okay, let's go with this cute little couple. Dinner and a movie, a classic, classic Valentine's date. We gotta spin. <laughs> My mind went blank. Okay, Kimberly, I think we're, so this will be seven. Seventh book, I don't, I don't know how many spin. Okay, you ready? <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna get the star. Okay, 23. Got the true love heart power couple. There we go. Start or finish a duology. Ooh, that could come in really handy. Okay. Let me dig for this one. Thankfully, you have a duology in there, and it looks like you're on part two in the demon duology. This is Can't Teach an Old Demon New Tricks by Cara Locke. What? <laughs> Can't teach. Can't Teach an Old Demon New Tricks by Cara Lockwood. Kind of got me from the first line. Get an East Texas girl good and mad, and there's going to be hell to pay. Yep. <laughs> so, Rachel Farnwood doesn't believe in the supernatural. There's, there's plenty of evil people around her in Dogwood County, including the guy who's trying to run her family's hardware store into the ground. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't a guy. It's actually a Mega Mart. So, the big box store is coming that's going to be driving all of the small businesses out of business. Then there's her own little hellraiser, her toddler, who apparently when he blows out his birthday candle, creates an inferno. So when her marriage blows up in smoke, she discovers that her ex isn't only just a deadbeat father, but he's actually a demon, a sloth demon on top of that, which explains why he never helped run the house. And he's got a renegade bounty hunter after him, who is an angel. So... Kevin, the ex, is trying to keep some secret under the wrap, and Sam, the angel, is going to, I guess, bring it to light. So, angels, demons, toddler that can, I guess, breathe fire. Yeah, you're having a rough day. So, anyway, there is the end of the duology. You get to find out the conclusion on this one, and I'm intrigued by that. That actually sounds really good. It's, it sounds like it's got that little, uh, you know, twisted sense of humor that appeals to me. My sack is getting small. Let's go. Let's get a ring box. What do you think? A diamond ring for? Oh no. Dear John, with divorce or breakup. It's not what you would expect with a ring box, but okay. That might be hard to find. Okay, so it looks like we're going to do eight. <laughs> so let's do one more. Kimberly, are you ready? I really, you get some love. Okay. Uh-oh, that one is definitely smack dab in the middle between 11 and 12. So we're going up for more chocolate for you. Okay, I'm gonna spin again and we'll go up top. So five, six, seven, eight. This looks like a Twix. I want some chocolate now. Indulge. Most recent purchase. I would call that love. Most recent book you bought. Read it. So I think that's, you know, that's one of the pitfalls of doing the booktube. You know, I rarely go out and buy a book and come home and read it immediately. So when this, this kind of comes up to urge you to do that, it's like a special treat. So I go out and I'm so excited. I buy it and I make a pile of the, the new ones and it's like, 
oh, I can't wait to get to you. I can't wait to get to you. And it doesn't make my list. <laughs> so, like I said, this is like a rare treat. So, yeah. Okay, most recent purchase. That one is going to be for you to determine because I don't know what you got or less. So, whatever it was, pick that puppy up and add it as your last book. Actually, I take that back because we're actually going to do a two more. I am going to respin for the ones that I wasn't able to match up with. So we are going to respin a four and a guest, a book that has a wedding. I didn't find one. So let's give the wheel a spin and see what other prompts you can get instead. Number 17. I hope this is a prompt that'll work. So many red flags. Horror. I don't know if you had any horror in there. I don't think you did. Let me look real quick. Actually, this works. We're going to kind of play with this prompt a little bit because you have Happy, Messy, Scary, Love by... It's too small to read. Lee Conan, Conan. So our main character in this, she loves horror movies. So I'm going to call that good. I, I think that's, it's got horror, right? So we've got a high schooler. Everybody's announcing their summer plans. But Olivia, she's harboring a little secret. She's going to spend her summer watching horror movies and chatting with her online friend, Elm. So Olivia and Elm apparently have been chatting online for a long time, but they've never shared any personal information. Other than the fact that Elm's aunt is a horror filmmaker. So one day Elm, you know, he, he wants to get to know a little bit more about Olivia. And he actually sends a picture of himself. She's shocked by how cute he is. And in a moment of panic, she sends a picture of her beautiful friend instead of one of herself. And of course, the two are going to meet in person and she's going to have to do some backpedaling. So... I think this counts because horror movies are going to be a big vibe in this book. And by the way, people who love the book Love and Gelato and the Unexpected Everything, this book is along those lines, I guess. So I'm curious about this one too. That one sounds good. Okay, we've got one more to redo. And that was for the LGBTQ. So let's give it a spin and see what we get. Oh, we got to replace it actually. I need to redo my prompts. When I did this Valentine board, I was thinking more along the holiday as opposed to how it would relate to finding books. And I think I may have gone too specific because they're really hard to match up. Okay, dinner date, food on cover. Maybe that'll work. All right, we got to spin. Number 13, my favorite. Maybe it's a good sign. Oh, Kimberly, you get flowers. First love, a favorite author. I don't know who your favorite author is. So, I am going to leave this one up to you. Uh, I'll, I'll let you choose who your favorite author is and put that book in there. So, you've got quite the list. I think you ended up with eight books. I hope you end up getting a five star and you find a new favorite amongst this list. And if not, that at least they're good. <laughs> All right. My brain's a little uh, mushy now because th that was quite a bit. So I am going to say bye for now. Keep an eye out day after tomorrow. I will have, I don't know, maybe my Sims. I'll be playing Bingo Maze again. I've got to do the extras, the challenge for that because I can't do anything simple. Nope. I, I got to... Make it all as involved and as complicated as I can. But you know what? That's okay because we're having fun, right? All right. I hope to see y'all soon. Kimberly, I had a lot of fun playing for you and I hope you enjoy your list. Y'all have a good one. Bye.